Do you have diabetes or prediabetes? Or are you taking care of your diet? In this video, I will tell you about the 10 best fruits for diabetics and also the five worst ones that you should be very careful with as they can increase your blood sugar significantly. Does this mean that there are some fruits that are completely off limits for diabetics? No, it means that you need to be more cautious when consuming the fruits from this last list. And the fruits on the first list, the best ones, you can eat more comfortably. Not only do they not increase your blood sugar, but they also contain nutrients and vitamins that will support your metabolism and health. Ah, so can diabetics eat fruit? Yes, not only can they, but they should. But you must have the wisdom to choose the best ones, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. To determine this ranking, I will use two variables, which are the glycemic index. What is the glycemic index? If you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, you need to know about this. The glycemic index is how much a food will raise your blood sugar. So in short, when you eat and digest, that food will increase your blood sugar. So, foods with a high glycemic index, foods that increase your blood sugar most significantly, are the worst for diabetics. And foods with a low glycemic index are the best, because they won't raise your blood sugar as much. Understood? What does high glycemic index, low glycemic index mean? The low glycemic index is up to 55. From 56 to 69, it is considered medium or moderate glycemic index. 70 or more is considered a high glycemic index. The second variable is the glycemic load. It's as important as the glycemic index, but rarely discussed. It's very rare to hear anyone talking about the glycemic load, and it's extremely important. Sometimes that's why you can't control your diabetes, because you focus too much on the glycemic index, which is widely discussed, and too little on the glycemic load. But what is it? What is the glycemic load? It's the amount of carbohydrate, the amount of sugar in a serving, in a food. It's the quantity of sugar. And what is considered low, moderate, or high glycemic load? Low glycemic load is up to 9 carbohydrates per serving. Moderate is from 10 to 19, and high is 20 or more. So the secret here is to choose foods with a low glycemic index and low glycemic load. The portion size for this classification should be the same and will be 120 grams. Because it's not possible to compare a watermelon with a grape or with a strawberry per unit. So the unit is not our measurement here. It's the 120 gram portion. Let's start our list. Before I start, I'm going to set a goal for this video. This is one of the most important topics, which is about food, fruits, and diabetes. I'm going to set a goal of 15,000 likes. That's quite an ambitious goal, but I'm counting on your help to distribute this video so you can understand it's relevant. If you've learned something thus far, then please help me out and give this video a like. Let's start with the best going from number 10 to number 1 in descending order. Coming in at number 10 is the apple. An apple is an excellent fruit for those with diabetes, prediabetes, or anyone looking after their health. Because apples have fiber, they have a low glycemic index. The glycemic index is 39. Anything up to 55 is good and they have a low glycemic load from 6 to 9 is also excellent. So apples are a perfect choice for those with diabetes. Especially since they contain pectin that can improve your cholesterol. Diabetics need to be more careful with their cholesterol. So another bonus. Oh, remember that apples should be eaten with the skin. Why? Because in the skin, there's a lot of fiber that reduces the glycemic index, improves your digestion and other benefits, such as reducing the risk of bowel cancer. So it's worth adding apples to your diet. At number 9, the pear. Pears have a glycemic index of 38 and a glycemic load or sugar content of 4. Excellent for diabetics. At number 8, strawberries. Strawberries have a glycemic index of 40 and a glycemic load of 3, meaning strawberries are excellent for diabetics. In addition to their low glycemic index and load, strawberries also contain anthocyanins, which have been extensively studied for their beneficial impacts on our health, especially heart health, and several antioxidants that are good for you. So strawberries, do you have access to them? Do you like strawberries? I really like them. They're worth adding to your diet. Coming in at number seven is guava. Guava is also exceptional for those with diabetes. Why is that? 
because it has a glycemic index of 23, which is very low, and a glycemic load of 3. It also has a reduced amount of sugars. It's also worth adding guava to your diet. Oh, but I've heard that diabetics can't eat fruit because of its fructose content, which is a big misconception. It's not the fructose that's harmful, but excessive fructose intake. Yes, excessive fructose is bad for your liver and can impact your blood sugar control, but the fructose in a guava, or strawberry for instance, won't harm your health. You can rest easy on that front. Coming in at number six is passion fruit. Passion fruit is also an excellent fruit for those with diabetes. Apart from all the benefits, such as helping with sleep, which is essential for those with diabetes, passion fruit has a glycemic index of 27 and a glycemic load of 5, meaning it's also excellent. Coming in at number 5 is avocado. Avocado is one of the best fruits in the world, not only because it has monounsaturated fats which help with your cholesterol, but it also increases your good cholesterol, HDL, improving your cholesterol levels. In addition to several antioxidants, avocados have a glycemic index of 10 and a glycemic load of 2, making it excellent for diabetics. Ah, uh, but I heard that avocados are high in calories. Yes, avocado is quite caloric because it's a source of good fats. However, if you consume these fats in excess, they can lead to weight gain and worsen insulin resistance due to increased fatty tissue. So, avocados should be consumed, but in moderation. If you consume one serving per day, it'll be enough for you to reap the benefits without an excess of calories. Here's a note, because, for example, strawberries and guavas are low-calorie fruits because they also have a low-fat content. Now, the avocado isn't excellent from a blood sugar perspective, but it is very high in calories, so it goes on our list for diabetes. But here's asterisk number four, an orange, specifically with pulp. Okay, it's not orange juice, just a heads up, fruit juices are not good for diabetics because when you make an orange juice in 200 milliliters, you will have a glycemic load of 23 to 25 grams of carbohydrates. You saw that up to 20 is considered moderate, 10 up to 19, 20 and above is already high. So a glass of orange juice will have an average of 25. So it's not a good deal for people with diabetes. In addition to the fact that I'm talking about the glycemic load, the glycemic index of the juice will also be much higher than orange with pulp. If you eat an orange, the orange has a very good glycemic index of 40 and a glycemic load of 5. This considering the 120 gram portion. So it is also excellent for those who have diabetes. The third best fruit is the kiwi depending on the region you might call it one way or another, but the fruit is the same. Kiwi has a glycemic index of 38 and a glycemic load of 9. It's borderline. However, as kiwi has other benefits with antioxidants, and there are also studies including that kiwi can reduce blood pressure, which is also a big concern for diabetics, not only blood sugar levels, but also blood pressure levels. It's worth including kiwi in your diet and fruit number two. Second on our list is the peach. Peach has a glycemic index of 42 and a glycemic load of four. It also shares the same characteristics that make it a good fruit for those with diabetes or prediabetes. This video is relevant for type one diabetes, type two diabetes, and also for prediabetes and for those who are taking care of their health without asking. Oh, but I have type 1 diabetes and I have type 2 diabetes, so it's the same thing. A lot of information isn't the same thing. Here's a tip, but for fruits, I created information designed for these types of diabetes as well. Lada type diabetes and Modi diabetes are also considered. The only thing this doesn't apply to is diabetes insipidus, which is a different story. And number one is the cherry. Cherry is also a great fruit for those with diabetes. It's part of a select group of red fruits that help with your health. The cherry also has a glycemic index of 27 and a glycemic load of 6, making it an excellent fruit for diabetics. Oh, it's not canned cherries. Natural cherries and canned cherries are two different things. Canned cherries are one of the worst fruits for diabetics, but natural cherries are certainly excellent. Let's go to the list of the worst. There are five worst ones that I will mention here, 
And when I say the worst ones, it means that diabetics should pay more attention. They are not forbidden. Okay, let's not confuse the information here. The purpose of the video is not to prohibit you from eating anything, but rather to alert you. There are five. I'm going to start again in descending order. And number five is the banana. Oh, the banana. But bananas are a fruit that diabetics need to pay more attention to. Why? It has a glycemic index of 62, much higher than the fruits on the first list. If you don't remember, go back to the video and compare. So, bananas have 62 and a glycemic load of 16, also much higher than other fruits such as guava or avocado, for example. Ah, but I was told that bananas are a source of potassium which has vitamins. Yes, bananas are a good fruit, but anyone who is taking care of diabetes and blood sugar levels must avoid bananas or eat more carefully. If you really want to eat bananas, you have to be very careful with the quantity. And number four is pineapple. Pineapple is also a fruit that you should pay extra attention to because it has a glycemic index of 59 and a glycemic load of 14. A moderate glycemic load, a moderate glycemic index as well. But in the classification, I had to choose the best and the worst. And pineapple will be on our second list. A list of fruits that you have to pay more attention to because it has a greater quantity of sugars. So it's not this whole thing that people talk about on the internet about pineapple, okay? Number three, mango. Mango is also a fruit that you should pay extra attention to because it has a glycemic index of 56 and a glycemic load of 14. Uh, but I heard that mango is a source of fiber, which will help with digestion and can also help control blood sugar levels. Yes, mango is a source of fiber, but remember here, it has a higher amount of carbohydrates. When you're taking care of your blood sugar, you shouldn't just look at fiber. You also have to look at these other variables that I'm explaining here. Many people also say, this might even be strange to you. Oh, if I take a fruit and I add chia, I add flaxseed, I will make this fruit a better food. What you will do, in fact, is improve the glycemic index as this fruit will increase your blood sugar. But the glycemic load, the amount of carbohydrates that you should also care about, it will not be changed. It will even be a little higher because there will be carbohydrates from your fiber. So you have to be careful, okay? Don't just add your chia and flaxseed and eat without guilt because that's not the way. You have to know the composition, quantity, and glycemic index. Number two, papaya. Papaya has a moderate glycemic index of 58 and a glycemic load of 12. It also has benefits. It has papain, which can help with your digestion. But I had to choose to put it here on our list of the worst, the fruits that you will pay the most attention to, and papaya is definitely on the list. I'm going to make an addendum here about two things. Let's talk number one, which is about dried fruits. Dried fruits are not recommended for those with diabetes. Why? When you take a dried fruit, a dehydrated fruit, as is the case with apricots, for example, or dried plums, you are removing the water. You are making that fruit have a higher glycemic index, and you are removing a good part of its composition of water but it is mainly increasing the glycemic load, the amount of carbohydrates. Some dried fruits, such as prunes and apricots, have a glycemic load of 30 or more. Look, it's much bigger than the ones I'm talking about here. This is in a portion of 120 grams, so you have to avoid dry fruits. It's not even good to moderate, it's good to eat a little. If you can exclude dried, dehydrated fruits from your diet, you will be doing a good job. Another observation is that uh, these values can vary depending on the fruit's ripeness level. So, greener fruits have a lower glycemic index. When fruits are more ripe and become sweeter, their glycemic index increases. It is fine. Here, I'm considering the middle ground. That's why, in some other lists, you may find a slight variation. Okay, it doesn't mean that one is wrong and the other is right. In fact, if the fruit is riper, the glycemic index is higher, which is worse for those with diabetes. And number one is grapes. Grapes have a glycemic index of 60 and a glycemic load of 12. Ah, but I heard that grapes are very healthy. 
They have antioxidants, flavonoids, and polyphenols. Yes, grapes are a very healthy fruit, but if you have diabetes, you need to also be cautious with this fruit and with watermelon. Is watermelon good or bad for people with diabetes? The lists are finished, and watermelon is neither among the best nor the worst. And now I did this to draw your attention to watermelon, the favorite fruit of many people. Watermelon is an excellent fruit. It has many benefits, several vitamins, and L-citrulline, which can even help with blood pressure by relaxing blood vessels. But regarding diabetes, watermelon has a low glycemic load of 3 per serving of 120, but has a higher glycemic index of 72. So if you combine these two characteristics, Watermelon could be on the list of the best. But how difficult it is for you to eat just one portion of watermelon, just one slice for those who eat one slice. So I'm going to reflect with you so you can think about what will really dictate whether you can eat a fruit or not is the quantity. So if you know how to moderate the amount of watermelon, it is an excellent option. Do you want to know more about some other fruit that I didn't talk about here? So write in the comments and I'll get back to you and rate this video from 0 to 10. If it's 10, I'll make more videos like this. Along with the comment, include the part of the world you're watching from, the part of the world you belong to, and which city you're watching this video in. I speak from Porto Alegre. Now that you know about fruits, do you want to know more about vegetables? The best and the worst? You will be surprised by this video here. In this video, I talk about the best and worst vegetables for diabetics. You will like it. Take care. Until next time.